Meet Sammy, a 12-year-old boy who loves music, reading, and engineering. A boy who is silly and energetic. But there's another thing about Sammy that you might not have noticed. Hello, I'm uh, Samuel Graham and I'm 12 years old and I have autism and ADHD. So what is autism? We asked students and teachers from Bonnie Lake High School if they knew what it was. Um, autism is a mental disability. Wide range of um, potential diagnoses. A behavioral uh, disorder that is diagnosed at a young age most of the times. Mainly affects someone's um, social interactions with people, I think. So who was right? The answer is all of them because autism is a little bit different for everyone. Autism is a complex neurobehavioral condition that includes impairments in social interaction, developmental language, and communication skills combined with repetitive behaviors. It covers a large spectrum of symptoms, skills, and levels of impairment. Between ages three and 10, children with autism spectrum disorder exhibit distinct brain chemical changes that differ from children with developmental delays and those with typical development. So what does this all mean? This means that autism is a diversity. Like everything, it comes with challenges and obstacles, but it also comes with a beauty and brilliance that the world would otherwise miss. Every person with autism is different and unique, which is one of the things that makes it so special. We asked Sam's mother, teacher, and himself to talk about his character, gifts, and who he is. Sam is very, very bright. He knows a lot about a lot. I think you can read incredibly quickly, much actually faster than I can read. He's very personable. People like him. Um, he reaches out to um, adults a lot and interacts with adults a lot, and I think that's a lot because that is because of his intellect. He can. Um, interact with adults well. He is a beautiful, kind, and loving person. Um, he is non-judgmental of other people, and he um, wears his heart on his sleeve. He will tell anyone that he cares about that he cares about them completely. Um, he will be incredibly kind to anyone who is not unkind to him, and, uh, and he was, he's open and and loving to anyone that he meets. Having autism has helped me, not only just with my grades and stuff, it's helped me understand other people's problems with, if they have ADHD, autism, stuff like that. It's helped me understand people. I like intervening in arguments that are happening, trying to calm the situation down. I've, and I've done that many times with my parents, with other people, with other people at school. But I like helping people not, sometimes not in the way of, oh, um, you have to do this and this, although I do do that a lot, but helping them get out of bad places, because I've been in bad places before where I've felt bad and felt like things are going bad, so I like helping them get out of there to, call, to be able to be calm and think about what's going on and help themselves. I think that that's one of my greatest qualities. Also, I'm the funniest guy around. Um, oh, he loves singing. He, uh, he, he sings all the time when he's in his room by himself or when he's just listening to music. He sings out at the top of his lungs and he's actually got a beautiful voice. He's uh, got a good pitch, he's got a great tone. Look around you, all you see are sympathetic eyes. Stroll around the grounds until you feel at home and here's to you, Mrs. Robinson. Although Samuel lives a great life, he also has many challenges. Ones that every 12 year old deals with and ones that most don't. These are the kids that, that get kind of um, pushed to the side and people get irritated with them. And it's not right and it's not fair. But a lot of people with autism and Asperger's syndrome have a tremendous amount of anxiety. And that's because all of these outward things, lights and sounds and feelings and clothing and wind and and everything their hair and their everything is just so is so intense to them that it feels like they're constantly being bombarded constantly bombarded by all this stimulation 
he's living in a world that he sometimes just has to tolerate. There's things in the world that um, are either overwhelming, whether it's sensory things or um, too much auditory information or, you know, anything can be um, overwhelming to him and Sam really has to work towards um, tolerating that. He is incredibly very uh, low hand-eye coordination for, for um, both, both gross and fine motor skills. Again, a very common thing with people with Asperger's and um, autism. And so, so writing, uh, for him to have to write everything that, he, that he's thinking is extremely difficult and painful. Sam can be a very black and white thinker, so it's kind of that all or nothing um, thinking. When I first met Sam, he would become more um, more agitated or frustrated with people because they were not seeing things the way he saw things. Anxiety builds and builds and builds and builds and builds and builds all day long, every day. He's building up and up inside of me where I get angry at a lot of people for many different reasons. Combined with all the anger I've had just makes me explode. He just had trouble uh, making friends with other kids. Um, he had trouble kind of interacting with other kids. He didn't really understand other kids very well and they didn't understand him. He would get angry really easily, really frustrated really quickly, um, that kind of thing. And I'd be around when other kids were kind of mean or cruel to him and he would react to that. He, he's uh, socially aware enough to know when people are being jerks to him. He knows what that looks like and he knows what it feels like. And so when people are being, uh, you know, um, just mean, he, uh, he, he can get really angry with that and he, um, he doesn't just crawl into a shell, he'll lash out uh, with, uh, with kind of, um, with anger and things like that. I would love to go to more parties and that type of stuff. Thing you know is, sometimes you're in, at your home, comfortable, laying in your bed, just, and somebody says, hey, do you want to go to this movie or a party or something? You're just like, no, I'm really t tired or I'm, I'm really comfortable here. But then the next day or in, maybe later on, you're thinking, oh, I really should have gone to that party. I really would have liked it. Feels misunderstood and sad by other kids. But mostly because of the nature of Sam, his intimate relationships are the most important to him. You feel like, not like you're different, but you're like kind of alone in your way. Like, even I had a fa I have great family growing up, and I've great I had everybody's with me, but they didn't know. They didn't know what it was like. But when they um, when they misunderstand him, when a teacher that he's trying to impress or trying very very hard to please misunderstands him or gets agitated with him, that causes him a lot of stress and anxiety because in fact he's trying very hard to please them and so when somebody that he cares about um, doesn't understand him, um, it, he gets very hurt. Like There are times in life where I hate myself, not for the fact that, oh, uh, I, I made this stupid mistake, for the fact that I was like, I'm kind of alone here. I went into his room and I found a, a picture of our family that he had always kept just on his little, he has a bookcase headboard and he had it taped to his headboard. And um, his little face was all scratched out. And I said, Sammy, why is your face scratched out? And he said, because I hate myself. And I said, why do you hate yourself? He goes, because I, I don't fit in this family. I don't work, I don't make sense. And uh, that's when we realized that he, he wanted to be like us. He wanted to be like everyone else. Part of the guy of autism, I wouldn't never change it. His not neurodiversity, in my opinion, is not a disability. Uh, in that, it's not. It's not something that makes him less than me or less of uh, less able than me. In fact, it can make him more able than me. People with. Asperger's syndrome have done amazing and beautiful things. Uh, people like, you know, Einstein um, that have been incredibly capable and done wonderful things for our, our world and for science. And we, uh, we can't underestimate what he is capable of and what all these kids are capable of in their lifetime. I think people need to be patient and compassionate um, because I think that we, we jump to conclusions um, 
People with autism, especially high functioning autism or Asperger's can kind of come across um, unintentionally as possibly rude because they're very honest. Um, that I'm not happy with them, I, like I'm, I'm angry at them in some way, but I'm not, it's, it's, that's just something I need to work on. And I wish that more people felt comfortable learning that their children had Asperger's or accepting that they might and exploring it because if they don't, they're depriving their kids of the knowledge of who and what they are, how their brain works, and the community that goes along with it. Um, it's, uh, I wish, if nothing else, that it became less of a stigma, more of an understanding of what a beautiful, positive, exciting thing it can be for us and for our society. Finding people that can think outside the box, learn outside the box, and uh, create outside the box in science, art, everything else. And I think, I wish that people were okay with it more, allowed their kids to be diagnosed more, kids allowed themselves to be called it more, weren't ashamed of it more. I wish it was just a, another beautiful way of being, which it is. What I need, needed and still need partially today is somebody to say, I accept that and I can not, not only just accept, like, not just that, not only to accept the fact that you do that, but also just, just to help me get out of my bad things. Because even today, I, I go into my room a lot, I hang out by myself, well, like for a long time. What I think would be great if somebody would not only accept the fact that I do that, but also to help me kind of get outside more, get to do more stuff. Us as a family have one, one role to everyone in our family, and that is to make sure that they are appreciated and loved exactly as they are, for who they are. Um, exactly, excuse me. <clears throat> exactly as God made them perfectly. Important is that they are not knocked down and broken when they're young. Uh, it's important that they're, by the people that love them the most, it's important, and by the, their teachers, and by their school environment, it's important that they're treated as though um, they are capable and brilliant and beautiful and that their neurodiversity is something that we have to adjust to. That we have to adjust so that they can be beautiful and wonderful and amazing. Mm, I sure I have all these problems but when I interact with you I don't want someone to be like treat me as if I need all these. I want somebody in the way to help me just by being me. I want to be the person, I want them to be the person I can talk with normally, just like a good friend. I don't want somebody to be like a mother helping a baby. I, I want somebody to help me in a way that I can feel is big. I, I want to have a good friend and that I feel is a big thing for me. Really, if you treat them like a person and you just treat them like if you were a teacher, like if you treat a kid like you would treat any other kid, maybe you give them a bit of easier stuff if they need it. But if if you treat them like that, they'll improve not only in the thing you're trying to teach them, but they'll feel as if you're their friend. So what did we learn? That Sam was born with something that is labeled as a disability. But he has brought a new perspective to this world. One that is beautiful, brilliant, and unique. His neurodiversity challenges him every day. But I challenge you to step outside what you know and how you think and let people like Sam show you a completely different and beautiful world.